So this next section of our videos is really just about five or six videos on miscellaneous things related to backups, things that we want to cover before we get into the restore process. So it's just sort of a, a random collection of miscellaneous bits. You know, I've put up here five bullet points. These are the items that we're going to cover. So we're going to talk about securing the backups. We'll talk about compression. I'm going to go through the details on no wait, rollback after, and immediate. Uh, and we're going to talk about what will happen if your log fills up. If your log fills up the disk, if your log gets 100% full and cannot grow, how do you get out of that scenario quickly and make it to where your users can actually start performing work again? And lastly, how do you take a backup of the log without emptying the log? So we're, uh, we're going to see a, a little bit of that as well. So you'll remember that earlier, the last video, a couple of videos ago, that we actually saw what happens when you take a backup of the log versus a backup of the full or differential. Remember that only the transaction log backup clears out that log, right? So we're going to talk about how to change that default behavior. Okay, so we're going to get started in this video with securing and backup compression. So let's jump in and talk about securing your backups here. Now, when, we're when we say securing your backups, we're talking about securing the backup files and the tapes that you store your backups on. Remember that if somebody has access to your SQL Server backup, they can restore that on their own server. If they are the SA, the DBO on their own server, then they would be able to restore your backup file. Okay, so you really have to be aware of security when it comes to your backup files. Now, previous versions, as we saw in one of the earlier videos on uh, Transact SQL backups, those previous versions, sorry, um, do allow passwords on backups and even SQL Server 2008 still supports this feature but it was deprecated in the previous version in SQL 2005 simply because it was uh, it was a weak feature it uh, it allowed certain things that shouldn't have been allowed and they just ultimately decided to back out of that altogether I put the syntax it still works today in SQL 2008 um, and if you did do this particular syntax where you have the password and the uh, backup here, then you'd have to provide that same password to do a restore. Okay? But don't do it today. It's not supported. Okay. So what is supported today, what we're supposed to do, if I can get it to go forward, is to use Windows file permissions to manage our backup files. So the ACLs, the access control list, you go to the folder that contains the backup files for your SQL Server and you simply add in the correct permissions of those people who are able to view and manage those files. Okay, so just only those people who are able to do the permissions, uh, who you want to be able to get access to those, should have access. Uh, one thing, and this is very, very important, make sure that your services have access. So make a note. Your service accounts need to be able to read, write, list all the files in that as well. Okay, so don't go create a folder and then lock it down to where only your user account can view it because then you wouldn't be able to take backups using SQL Server jobs. Maybe that doesn't make sense to you. We'll need to get into the chapter on dealing with jobs and automation a little bit later. So we'll, we'll come back and talk more detail about those service accounts and backups. So prepare to, with this one, best practice, just lock it down with Windows. Uh, same thing with your tapes. Secure your tapes. Uh, you know, you'll want to put this in a safe with a uh, safe deposit box, some type of a safe, so that no one could get access to those tapes. Okay. Next up, let's talk about backup compression in SQL Server 2008. And when you take your backups, remember that by default, there is no compression, right? Now, really for years, certain DBAs, <coughs> myself uh, and others, have relied on using third-party tools to do that compression, um, even though certain third-party tools are not supported. 
There have been some companies that wrote tools uh, that are supported. I'm not listing them here um, because I I actually try to stay away from too many vendor specific tools. WinZip, 7-Zip, WinRAR, those are ubiquitous. Every organization has one of those tools. Every home computer, it seems, has one of those tools to deal with zips. So I don't mind putting that in here. But I do try to avoid putting vendor discussions into my videos. It kind of almost makes me beholden to that vendor, I think, uh, if I do it. And so I've always kind of prided myself on being a vendor independent trainer. And I think that's the one, of the one of the reasons that people come to learn it first for their training is learn it first isn't, you know, we aren't Microsoft. We can say what we want. We aren't Idera or Redgate or some of the other big companies. So I can say what I want because they're not paying me. <laughs> so I try to keep that separation. So I'm going to apologize that I don't have some of these third-party tools listed. But if you did a search for SQL Server Backup Compression, you're likely to find a lot of those tools there. Okay. So anyhow, back to this thing uh, with WinZip. You know, WinZip, you can take, you know, if it's a, a large textual uh, file uh, or text-based database with lots of text, you can get a 10 gig database backup down to 500 megs. I mean, it can do some huge compression. If it's primarily numeric-based, you may not be able to really get any uh, space savings out of it. It might be 9.8 gig. Uh, but the, the thing is that your backups are unsupported once you wrap them inside of a tool like WinZip. Okay. So in SQL Server 2008, there's a new feature called Backup Compression. And it does allow SQL Server natively to compress the backups. That is supported. Now, you can only create compressed backups in developer and enterprise edition. So, sorry, if you're on standard edition, this ain't for you. So, developer edition and enterprise can create them. But then if you've created an enterprise edition compressed backup, you can then restore that on any edition of SQL Server. Okay, so all editions have the ability to restore a database created with backup compression. Um, it does actually make it faster, generally speaking, to take your backups. So it seems almost illogical to me that this would be both a disk space saving and a time saving feature, but absolutely it does. And in the next video, we're going to walk through some demos that will try to give you an idea of exactly that specific situation, that it actually makes it smaller and saves you time. You got to have a lot of CPU usage for this. Um, if you start playing with this and it's taking up too much CPU so that it's you know affecting your applications, then there's this concept here that we're going to discuss later on in the course called the resource governor. And with the resource governor, you can actually specify, uh, I want to make sure that the CPU doesn't exceed a, a certain value here when it's doing backup compression. So we're going to cover that a little bit later in the course. Not really going to cover it uh, right now. Okay. Uh, if I get back over here. So uh, what I'm going to do in the next video is demonstrate backup compression. So I'm going to show you how to do it both in the management studio as well as with Transact SQL. You are probably going to be dealing with this more from a Transact SQL standpoint than anything because your backups are usually jobs. Um, but I'll show you how to do both. And then the rest of this, uh, the other three bullet points are all just going to be demos. So let's just get started in the next video with some demos.